Hi, I'm Rodrigo from DJ Tech Zone, and today I'm really really happy to be able to test out the HTJ 1000 MK2 uh, media player from Pioneer DJ and I also have the DGM 450 mixer from Pioneer, new brand new two channel mixer from Pioneer with um, sound color effects, uh, effect module, LCD screen, sender returns for the effects but that's gonna be the object of our next reviews, you, you will see it a lot in play and in view here, but I'm not going to directly review it. It's going to be two separate reviews uh, for both units. I have two SDJs, so I can show you a lot of stuff uh, uh, around uh, syncing and all that, um, and how you can use it uh, with uh, these players. So the XHJ 1000 MK2 media player is the latest uh, player in the XAJ range from Pioneer DJ. It started with the XAJ, XAJ 1000 media player that came a while out a while ago. And this player, which is uh, sitting around 1200, 1290 US dollar euro uh, price range, you can check uh, the exact price in the links below, link to this video. So it's in the 1.2k 1, 1 range. The XJ1000 was uh, a bit cheaper, around 1000 euros, dollars. So this is a bit more expensive and it has a bit more to go for it. Uh, for example, it supports lossless file formats, uh, audio formats. So you can use uh, uh, lossless file, file formats with this, uh, like the Apple, um, like FLAC and uh, Apple Lossless, which is quite cool if you are into very uh, um, uh, high quality music uh, uh, for your sets and for your, um, for your mixes. The differences are, are are not that big with the uh, with the uh, thousand uh, with the ACJ thousand, but you do have so as I said the audio uh, formats that are supported. But also the browsing section has these extra knobs around uh, the encoder uh, that uh, that the ACJ thousand ACJ thousand didn't have. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, the quantized button. I didn't review the original ACJ thousand, so I'm not entirely hundred percent sure. Uh, what all the differences are, but for example, the quantize button is a physical button here, while it was a software option on the thousand. But don't kill me on that if I if I get that wrong. Apart from, apart from that, they are very similar players. The build is plastic. It's not a high-end quality build, built like a tank quality from the CDJ 2000 uh, Nexus 2. But you also pay twice the price for that uh, media player. So those professional club players they cost uh, uh, way above thousand dollars. This one comes in at uh, around half of it. So there are also compromises. So the jog wheel is, well, it's a big uh, CDJ size jog wheel. Uh, you remember I reviewed the XJ, XJ700 a while ago that had smaller jog wheels. This has a full size uh, jog wheel um, with the center LED uh, that displays the needle information as well. So if you want in your house or in your small bar, uh, a CDJ-like experience, well this is the closest that you get uh, with a modern player. It has no CD slots, uh, let that be clear, there is no CD slot here. Um, but apart from that it has so many features from the uh, more uh, expensive players like the 2000 Nexus 2. For example, the big screen and that screen is really, really uh, what um, makes this player stand out. For half the price of a CDJ 2000 Nexus you get Many of the features, not the hardware control that you have on the 2000 Nexus, for example, the hotkey buttons on the side are not present here, but you get many of the, of the features of the, of the Nexus in this player for half the price. Let's review quickly what those features are and we'll, we'll just uh, go through them uh, and, uh, and uh, I'll give you a few examples on how they work as well. Um, so the hardware wise, uh, it's Pioneer CDJ uh, like uh, it's it's C XDJ player, but the, the layout is very familiar for those that are used to play with uh, CDJ players. You have uh, the beat loop section, you have the uh, direction button so to reverse your track, you have the track search and the search overall buttons, you have play and cue buttons, uh, you have your big size jock wheel. You don't have a tension, tension adjust on this one uh, that you have on the uh, 2000 Nexus uh, uh, two, uh, but well, they are they are well weighted. So that, I mean, for overall general use for most DJs, this will be fine. The vinyl speed adjust function is a little bit weird because what it does, it 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 affects both the start and the stop. So here it starts and it stops immediately. If I go the other way, 
it starts slowly and it stops slowly so there is no way to get the track uh, to uh, start immediately and stop slower what, usually what DJs want there is one way though if you engage slip it will start immediately because the slip function uh, uh, supposes that um, you pick up where you left off so you can do this kind of tricks this kind of stuff so that's possible uh, uh, when you engage slip mode so you have the vinyl mode setting apart from the vinyl speed adjust on this side you have the tempo mode uh, where you can uh, uh, set the the tempo range of the pitch fader the master tempo setting so the key lock is, is also a key lock and your long throw pitch fader which is uh, basically the same pitch fader uh, well the same resolution pitch fader as on a uh, cdj 2000 nexus uh, on the back you have usual outputs uh, we'll go into that a bit later but that's the physical part so on the top next to the screen you have the encoder button to do various things back button text track we will show that the filter the shortcut uh, and then a few buttons uh, uh, around quantize time mode uh, auto queue and the button to stop USB basically that's it if we focus where it matters basically on the screen it's a big screen, high resolution screen. Um, you can do a lot of stuff. So uh, you can browse the tracks, of course, and uh, select the track and load the track. Uh, the player is not super fast, but not annoyingly slow either. So it has a, enough speed not to be annoying when you're playing. When you, when you go to the top, you can, uh, uh, on the top of the screen, you have several functions. So for example, uh, what uh, has been tagged. So since I have uh, connected my player in different ways, so directly through USB with the PC in different modes and through the USB key, I have different tag lists. So uh, my USB tag list is empty. But for example, if I press the tag button here on the USB and I go to my tag list, I have a track that is tagged uh, there uh, at that moment. Info gives me all the detail on the track and then you have of course the uh, menu utility well, where I can select different settings on how to for example sort my track and also if I press long I have my menu utility that gives me access to different settings uh, of the player. Now those settings are maybe a little bit complex you also have which is quite cool a shortcut that allows you to uh, uh, change a few key settings of your player for example the waveform color I like to put it to RGB because then I get all the nuances of the of the track I have the phase meter which type of phase meter I, w I, wa I want to have how um, the hot cues auto load the quantize uh, beat value and uh, a few other things so it's quite handy to have uh, um, uh, that shortcut that allows you to shortcut that allows you to do specific things quickly uh, from um, from this menu setting and then you have the track filter setting which is extremely powerful because your record box library allows you to do a lot of stuff with your music I mean it allows you to uh, um, color code it to give it a rating detect the key so all those things you can use if you use them when you're preparing your tracks you can use them to uh, filter out your tracks for example if I only want to see uh, tracks in uh, key C for example uh, and I go back so let's up key and I look at my tracks in the filter, I have nine tracks filtered out when I use that specific filter. So I have my filter set to the uh, key. For example, I can go for the rating only uh, uh, 
trucks with a uh, five star rating and I have, as you can see, 50, 50H trucks that are filtered out when I apply the filter setting. So that's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to have that and it allows you to organize your trucks in, in a more smart way so that when you're playing, you don't need to go and search. Now, searching works very well as well. If you want to search, uh, uh, tracks you press hard on the search and you have a QWERTY keyword that allows you to search your tracks for example I know I have a track called simple design there it pops up immediately so I don't need to I don't need to uh, um, you know scroll through my entire USB collection now is this as easy and fully featured as searching on your computer no it's not quite there it's a, it's a good attempt at searching on a player I'm really uh, uh, curious to see where this is going to go uh, in the next few years, how you can make searching on, on a small screen uh, more convenient, but this is already a good start. You have a QWERTY keyboard and, and you can type in. If we go into a specific track, if we go into a specific track, uh, we, we can start uh, using or we can use the perform function, function of the player that allows us to, you know, access different, uh, 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 do different things with the track and access, for example, the hot cues. I have quantize on, so on one beat, cannot go out of it if I put This is as good using the screen as physical buttons, no it's not the same but the cool thing is, is that with this player you can actually con connect the uh, Pioneer DJ SP8 uh, module so the pad module uh, that can allows, that allows you to manipulate hot cues and loops and, and rolls and stuff like that um, and you can connect it to the player and you can instead of using the screen you can use the physical buttons of that unit uh, to manipulate all the, all, the, all the performance features, which is pretty cool to have uh, a setup like that with an SP8, with uh, uh, an SP8 uh, and, the, and the player uh, uh, to serve the music. That's really cool. So that's a new feature in the XJ1000 MK2, something that was not there in the uh, XJ1000, the original player. So that's pretty nice. So when you're in the performance screen, you have access to your hot cues, of course, there are two banks of hot cues that you can access with. You can have up to eight hot cues per track. Uh, I'm in hot cue mode, hot cue mode, but I can also go to beat jump mode, as you can see. And in beat jump mode, I can go back one beat, two beats, or four beats, or I can go forward. And as you can hear, everything stays nicely in beat. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I have the beat loop as well. So a loop there. I can uh, instead of choose the size of the loop. Increase the size of the loop. I can do this all from the player itself, uh, all from the screen itself, so I don't need to uh, um, go out of that and, and use the, the physical buttons. If you enter a slip mode, then your uh, beat loop becomes some sort of roll feature. And you can use both, you can, can combine both. How do you manipulate hot cues? If you have hot cues uh, on bank A, for example, you can also delete your hot cues and say, okay, I want to delete both those hot cues want to start all over again and I want to set a new hot cue 
there. I want to set a hot cue. right here I want to set I want to set the hot cue right here and I set my hot cue and I made changes to my hot cues and all those changes, when I connect, I take my stick and I push it back into my Rekordbox uh, system, uh, those changes will be recorded as well in Rekordbox. So that's maintaining everything synced is pretty easy uh, because the player can record information and uh, the Rekordbox uh, uh, application can uh, take that information and use it. And you also have uh, uh, something else. Uh, here, since I have the two players connected, I can uh, use a sync uh, functionality and sync two tracks. I only have one USB stick and I have two players uh, working from the same stick. So, for example, if I launch another track, I sync it up. I have a sync track. My tracks are synced. What I also like very much is the phase meter, uh, which is pretty nice. The phase meter actually gives me uh, uh, pretty good information on uh, how on time I am with my mix, and uh, and it works a little bit like stacked waveform. So it, it really kind of mimics the Serato DJ functionality of, or the Rekordbox DJ of stacked waveforms on the players. And that's pretty cool because it allows me. That really allows me to to even if I'm not completely sure uh, of my mix when I'm uh, mixing in my ear, headphones, beat matching manually with with my ear, I, I still always have that visual confirmation that I'm on track, and that's also always good if you're uh, you know a little bit tense or you're uh, occupied with several things at the time. And, and you can delegate a little bit. Performance-wise, that's kind of a lowdown of what a player can do. These players allow you to get music in many different ways. So, um, I now I'm in USB mode, and this one is playing USB from the stick, and this one is linked via Ethernet through this player and grabbing uh, the tracks from the USB stick. But I could also uh, launch my uh, had my record box on and connect through USB directly to the computer and use the record box library. So now I'm connected uh, immediately through my uh, from my ECHA player uh, to my MacBook and I can see it because it's in record box mode and it's uh, connected to the Rodrigo's MacBook Pro which is my MacBook and I can browse the entire my entire library uh, uh, from the player and actually um, read the tracks directly from the player which is pretty cool I have access to all my libraries and everything that I use and that I do um, directly from the screen what, what is cool being in the MacBook and uh, be, uh, reading from the record box library and I launch a track uh, I have access to all the uh, metadata from the track in record box on my screen so I have access to uh, uh, the color waveform I can do the performance performance stuff so setup wise it's nice because I can play from my library I can have my USB stick plugged in that's kind of an emergency thing if for somehow my my computer goes out of the window I can always go uh, back to that USB stick and, and that's kind of easy to have, you know, that's kind of easy to have. Um, there is another mode, uh, uh, connection mode that you can use, which is basically the uh, performance using the Rekordbox DJ software 
as a control software and uh, use the ECJ1000 as a MIDI controller. Just to be clear, what I did just now was only reading the files on the hard drive through Rekordbox uh, and the player was still doing all the work. What I'm going to do now is using um, all, the, all, the, all the work, all the calculation will happen on the computer and the player will only be will only be a MIDI controller. So let's set up the connection. I see the record box sign here and I can choose a deck. I choose deck one and there we go. I am uh, immediately in record box and I can browse all the tracks that I want. You can see that my screen also is changing here on the I can load the tracks. I have access to the full color waveform. And again, everything works. I have my hot use. Quantize works. One beat. I put sleep mode on. My beat loop works. So, I can play uh, um, on one, even if they're linked, is, this player still can access the USB key while this player is playing from the computer. That's basically uh, the XAJ thousand mk2 player on the back side of the player as i said uh, there is not much difference with uh, the uh, ecj thousand you have the rci output you have the uh, usb uh, um, connection to the computer uh, but what you also have here is a digital out apart from that uh, you have uh, uh, also the ethernet connection that i use uh, for the link uh, that is uh, in this that is uh, available in this player and that's it that's the the XDJ 1000 MK2 uh, media player from Pioneer DJ. As I said, it's uh, in the price range of 1.2k US dollars or euros. Uh, find prices in the more extended review on DJ Tech Zone on the blog that is linked uh, uh, in uh, this video. Um, and I would, you know, from a recommendation point of view, who would I recommend this player uh, to? Well, DJs that take their jobs obviously seriously, that want a quality equipment uh, in their home or mobile rig setup, um, that want a flexible player that can and act as a MIDI controller, as a MIDI controller and as a, a standalone player uh, in a in a in a full setup. This can do that. This can do this. This can do uh, MIDI. This can do USB. This this player can do Link. If you don't need the CDs. Frankly, there is not really a good financial or economical reason to spend twice the price and go for the CDJs 2000 Nexus 2. There are more robust players, granted, yes, that's for sure. Uh, they are professional, but this is pretty, pretty good as well. If you take care of them, if you buy them a nice uh, um, a flight case uh, that will protect these players, a nice dust cover, this will go probably uh, uh, with you for a long while. And they are very flexible. So. In my opinion, uh, for mobile DJs, these are really the, the perfect uh, uh, players to have or for small setups in bars and, and small clubs. Um, most record box DJs that have followed the evolution of record box uh, uh, will have music that is compatible with these players, sticks that is compatible with these players, or a laptop that they can plug in via USB and use uh, the functionality of these players directly. I hope you like the review. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, uh, here on DJ Tech Zone, we have uh, I have a backlog of stuff. Uh, if you look behind me, you see a few, uh, a little bit maybe of what's coming up in the next uh, in the next reviews, and it's not all. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, next one will be the DGM 450 mixer. I'm I'm really looking forward to review this uh, little player, uh, sorry, little mixer, which is a little mixer but really really fully featured. You will see that in the review. 
Uh, that's the next one coming up. Uh, and in the meanwhile, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, uh, follow us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the notification service so you know when I put up new videos. And hopefully I will see you soon in the future, uh, back here. And in the meantime, uh, enjoy the rest of the content and see you soon. Thank you so much.